You are now listening to the Make Me Your Grimy Again podcast, narrated by yours truly, Karen Garcia. Today, we tackle the tragic story of Amadou Diallo. On February 4th, 1999, four New York City Police Department plainclothes officers fatally shot unarmed Amadou Diallo at 12.44 a.m. in the vestibule of his building at 1157 Wheeler Avenue in the Soundview section of the Bronx. Officers Sean Carroll, Richard Murphy, Edward McMillan, and Kenneth Boss let off 41 shots at Amadou, 19 of which struck him. Officer Sean Carroll claimed that Amadou matched the description of a serial rapist that he and the other four officers of the street crime unit were in search of. Officer Carroll also claimed that Amadou reached into his jacket to pull out an object that he and the other officers interpreted as a gun, then let off a bombardment of 41 bullets. The object pulled out of Amadou's jacket was his wallet. Police spokesman and investigator Michael Collins stated that investigators did not find the weapon on on Diallo's body or at the scene of his murder. Amadou Diallo emigrated to New York City in September 1996 from Guinea, West Africa. Diallo was a devout Muslim of the Fulani tribe from the village of Deluma, where his mother, Kadiatu Diallo, and most of his family resided. While in the United States, Amadou resided in the community of Guineans who settled in the Soundview section of the Bronx. Described as an extremely kind, shy, and hardworking man, Diallo worked 12-hour shifts as he sold gloves, videotapes, socks, and other items on Manhattan's 14th Street. He shared in an apartment with a fellow Guinean, Mamadou Kujabi, and his two cousins, Modu Salu Diallo and Abdul Rahman Diallo. Abdul stated, all he did was go to work and come home. Amadou's immediate goal was to obtain a degree in computer science, which was cut short due to his untimely death. The surrounding Guinean community responded to Amadou's death. Amadou's roommate, cousins, and other Guineans in the Sami section of the Bronx gathered around his apartment building to express quiet outrage, make grim preparations to collect his body, have it washed in the Islamic tradition, and sent home. Immediately after the murder of Amadou, the four plainclothes officers were placed on administrative duty while NYPD investigated the shooting. Three of the four plainclothes officers who murdered Amadou were involved in shootings at least two years prior. Officer Boss, who has been on the police force for seven years, is under investigation in the October 1997 fatal shooting of a man who the police said was menacing people with a shotgun in front of an apartment building on Sheffield Avenue in East New York, Brooklyn. Officer McMillan, a five-year police veteran, was cleared after shooting shooting and wounding a man in East New York, Brooklyn last June. The police said the man had a loaded 9mm handgun. Officer Carroll, who has also been on the force for five years, was found to have been justified in firing his gun last August on Wilson Avenue in the Bronx. On February 8, 1999, up to a thousand people, angered by Diallo's murder, rallied in front of his home to condemn the racially charged brutal actions of the four white plainclothes officers. In attendance at the rally were community leaders, politicians, and demonstrators from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, with most of them being black. Most of those in the crowd were African American or immigrants from countries in West Africa who said they felt as if they had lost a brother. Professional students with blue collar workers who carried homemade posters of skeletons wearing police uniforms. Retirees and college graduates pumped their fists into the air and shouted, black power, and parents made their children pay attention. There was a sea of chants that included no justice, no peace, 41 bullets, four officers and one man dead. The protesters demanded a federal investigation for Diallo's murder as they cited Mayor Giuliani's failure to condemn the officers for the murder and order their arrests.
Mama Duka, who came to New York five years ago from Senegal before the shooting, said of Mr. Giuliani, when people shoot cops, he is there. But when cops shoot people, he doesn't show up. Diallo's mother, Kariatu, rejected Mayor Giuliani's offer for financial help in transporting his body back to Guinea from New York City. She and her husband preferred the help of other African immigrants and relatives. Al Sharpton spoke to Kadiatu's rejection of Giuliani's aid. I hate to blow the mayor's bubble here, but they are not preoccupied with the mayor. They are preoccupied with how they are going to deal with political injustice and how they are going to bury someone who shouldn't be buried. Workers from the mayor's office sent people to pick up Saiko Diallo, Amadou's father, from Kennedy International Airport. But Saiku decided to leave with Al Sharpton and family attorney Kyle Waters. Saiku spent time in Amadou's Bronx apartment at 1157 Wheeler Avenue. New York City's first black mayor and Giuliani's predecessor condemned Giuliani's reaction as woefully inadequate and he had more criticism for the handling of the case. This business of the police are always entitled to the benefit of the doubt should not operate in every circumstance, Mr. Dinkins said. He went on to say, clearly the fact of this put the burden on the cops to come forward and explain. The mayor should be asking that question. Mayor Giuliani spoke to reporters to explain that he understood the frustration surrounding the case and handling of Diallo's murder, but stated, There is a tendency of some people in our society to blame the police in broad strokes that is just as vicious a prejudice as any other prejudice. Mayor Giuliani will double down on his stance on the same day Amadou Diallo's parents transported his hearse from the National Action Network on 125th Street in Harlem, surrounded by Al Sharpton, community members, and angry demonstrators to Guinea, West Africa for burial. While demonstrators chanted, no justice, no peace, and Giuliani must go, Mayor Giuliani continues to defend the New York City Police Department at City Hall. At City Hall, Mayor Giuliani stated, when people in other major urban police departments want to learn about restraint, they come to the city of New York and look at the things the police department in New York City does to teach police officers restraint, cultural awareness, and cultural sensitivity. It's not done perfectly. It will never be done perfectly. It should be done even better. But the strategies actually are working very, very effectively, and almost everybody outside New York City who was in this business understands that. He also challenged the notion that the police are disproportionately targeting members of minority groups. When a reporter said that 85% of the people shot by the police in the last five years were black or Hispanic, the mayor responded, but that is actually less than the number that are actually shot in society. Mayor Giuliani also deflected with a black on black crime argument. He stated, there are more shootings involving black victims and black shooters as a percentage than there are of police officers doing it. So I know those are difficult facts for people to deal with, but what we should be about in government and what you should be about in the media is leading people to the truth, not to reinforcing biases and prejudices. On February 25th, 1999, all four officers were acquitted of all charges for their participation in the murder of Amadou Diallo by a jury in Albany. Diallo's parents, Saiku and Kariatsu, were described as quiet upon hearing the verdict with Kariyatsu moved to tears as they swiftly left the courtroom. After the acquittal, the lawyers who represented the officers blamed Diallo for his murder and the excessive amounts of bullets fired on his suspicious behavior and supposed failure to follow orders, rather than that racial profiling, excessive force, and abuse of power displayed by the officers. While Mayor Giuliani, the Bronx District Attorney, and the lawyers for the officers praised the fair trial while acknowledging the mistakes, former Mayor David Dinkins condemned the acquittal as he stated that this will send the wrong message to those members of the street crime unit who walk around saying, we own the night, 
and Al Sharpton's claims that there would be a push for the Justice Department to bring a federal civil rights case. Kadiatu gave a statement outside of the courthouse. She said, I ask for your calm and prayers. She added, as we go on for the quest of justice, life, equality, I thank you all. In 2004, Diallo's family settled a civil lawsuit against New York City in the case of Diallo's murder for $3 million. The civil lawsuit was filed in April 2000 and initially aimed for $61 million. Diallo's family used much of the settlement to create the Amadou Diallo Foundation. The NYPD disbanded the Street Crimes Unit, which prior to Diallo's murder came under scrutiny various times with criticism from politicians and community members. The only officer involved in Diallo's murder still employed with the NYPD is Kenneth Boss. Former police commissioner Raymond Kelly expressed to Kadiatu Diallo that he would not restore a gun to Kenneth Boss. But in 2012, Kenneth Boss indeed received a firearm. Kenneth Boss briefly served as a Marine in Iraq in 2006. Boss was determined to receive a firearm back after several denials to his pleas for one. Kadiatu characterized it as a betrayal from the NYPD, especially on the part of Commissioner Raymond Kelly. Amadou Diallo's legacy lives on through his family and the Amadou Diallo Foundation at amadoudiallo.org. Amadou's untimely death has also been honored by musical artists such as Bruce Springsteen, The Strokes, Lauryn Hill, Wyclef John, and several others. As well as in television, movies, and writing, Diallo's high-profile case has drawn parallels to other deaths due to police brutality and racial profiling such as Sean Bell and the thousands of cases that occur from policing in the United States.